So in this video, I want to talk about DSEQ3 by TB Pro Audio. And before I start the video, just a short disclaimer. Um, this video is not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with the company itself. I never talked to the company. It's just pure love. Okay. Um, so this, e this EQ here is basically probably the most slept on plugin ever because they don't do ads. They don't do sponsored videos. There is no iLog. It's only 79 bucks and it just, you know, does its thing. It's just a useful plugin. It's not fancy. It's not, you know, flashy or anything. Um, it just, you know, you can do all kinds of different things with this. Um, so it's very useful and very versatile. That's what I want to say. So, um, in this video, I want to show you basically how I use it in different situations in different for different use cases. So first up, maybe you know the plugin called uh, Track Spacer. You can do basically the same thing with the CQ3 just in the spectral domain and with the, with the much more influence on it, right? So here I have this kind of acoustic drum loop or breakbeat in the background I made with Addictive Drums 2. It sounds like this. And I have some synth drums here, a kick drum and a snare drum into a bus. So very basic, right? So I want to layer basically these synth drums with this acoustic drum loop. And you want to get rid of some of the frequencies inside of this acoustic drum loop, right? Because the kick drum and the snare drum share the same frequencies. So you can just put an EQ on that and, you know, create some weird looking curve and EQ out the kick and the snare and so on. And you can also use something like track spacer, which is some kind of compressor that uses sidechain plugin and then it ducks the frequencies. Uh, but you can also use just DSEQ3, which kind of does the same. So here we use um, the sidechain inputs. We use the output here of the drums master post. And we use here the this small little knob called sidechain. So you have to enable here the sidechain uh, feature. And then you get basically the sounds of this synth kick and synth snare into the DSEQ3 on this acoustic drum loop track. So that's the setup. So now the DSEQ3 catches basically the frequencies of the synth kick and synth snare and tries to reduce exactly these frequencies on this acoustic drum loop and we can influence this in multiple ways first up we can change the gain strength or gain reduction strength which is something like a ratio on a compressor so you can say you have the multiplier of one a multiplier of one here and then increase this so it pulls down these frequencies that are detected much more much stronger so you can reduce the volume of these frequencies even more then we have here attack decay or attack on release so it releases basically these frequencies much faster but most of the times it sounds too um yeah it, it's a bit distorting the signal in a way that's too slow we just still want to have some percussions in between the kick and the snare in there. It also depends, of course, all these settings here depends on what you want to achieve. Sometimes you want to completely get rid of the frequencies and sometimes you just want to layer uh, slightly. So you want to have a bit of frequencies of the acoustic drums in there and also uh, some of the synth kick and synth snare in there, right? So we want to mix it basically slightly. So it depends on your on your uh, taste. We have also here the slope where we can influence basically the prioritization of the low end and the high end. More low end, right? It just takes away frequencies here from the kick. Or more top end or something in, in between probably just right you can see the fundamental of the snare pretty clearly
Let's bypass. In my opinion, that's okay. We can also change here the selectivity, which means we can increase the bands or the bins, the frequency bins. But if you increase this too much, um, yeah, then it sounds more like an MP3 encoder at some point. Something something between zero and one hundred is probably the best. So you don't want basically all the individual frequency bands to taken care of. You want to group them and maybe smooth it out a bit. So this is how I use it most of the times at least. So that's okay. Um, then instead of using this as a track spacer um, or as a frequency dugger, you can also just reverse this. We can say instead of using here drum post, we use drums pre. So we can mute this and still get the audio from the drums because it's now pre fader. And then here we basically use the delta signal. Right, so now it becomes some kind of gate. So we use the kick drum, the synth kick and the synth snare here to basically only play these frequencies, but in this acoustic drum loop. So we cut out basically the frequencies and just play them. So maybe you know the plugin called Silencer, which is some kind of spectral gate. You can do kind of the same thing with this um, because you can cut out only the kick, only the snare, or, or maybe only hi-hats based on the sidechain signal. So you can use maybe a white noise, a Q white noise on a second channel, and then you can use this then to cut out or get some frequencies out of this um, drum loop here or some audio material so it's also a spectral gate if you want to use it that way right so maybe that's something for you but here we just want to use it as an uh, gain reduction tool then there's this problem maybe you are finished with your track and you want to compare your track to another released track to the mix or to the frequency distribution. And you can also use the SEQ3 as a match EQ. But it's even better than a match EQ in most cases, and I show you why. So here I have a DSEQ3 on the master, right? And we can just use here the slope of 4.0 dB per octave. So 3 is pink noise. 4.5 dB is maybe too warm, and I use here 4.0. And we have now the straight line here, right? And we can pull this down the threshold. And maybe you don't like that it's a straight line. So we can influence this line here, of course, with, uh, with these parametric EQs or with this pre-EQ and amplify certain things for the analyzer. Um, but we can also just scan a different track and use this as a threshold. So here I'm using some kind of track. Something like this, right? We pull this in. Some kind of drum bass tune. And we just cut out here the meat of the track where we have, um, let's say, um, bass and drums. Um, so we have this here in the master. And then I mute this here for a moment so I don't get striked. Um, we hit basically here record inside of DSEQ and we can record then the audio signal. So I hit record and then hit 
uh, let's say play and I scan or analyze this for a moment to get all the different frequencies or the frequency distribution of this track. I think that's enough. Uh, and then we have your threshold from inputs. We can use this already, but you can also save this as a threshold file. So export. Let's maybe call this hyperactivity. Right. And then we can use this every time we master or we mix something down and can compare it to this kind of uh, track here or the, the frequency distribution of this track. Uh, so let's mute this here, go back to the master. So to use this now, we put the slope to zero dB. That's kind of important. Um, so it's not influenced by the slope here, right? So we only use basically the bare signal, the bare frequency distribution of the scanned track. Then uh, we use here plus 30 dB as a threshold. That's how the manual says you need, you need to do it. And then we enable here basically the custom threshold. So now we can play this and you can already see how it tries to take away certain frequencies here. You can pull down the threshold. Right, and it tries to take away a lot of high end. That's probably um, because it's an MP3 and it's also a ready master tune, so they put probably a high shelf on that. Um, so you can see completely here the curve of this original tune we just scanned, and you can see where you are diverging from this frequency distribution. Right, you can also increase the selectivity to have more bands. And we can also increase the attack. So some of our transients are leaking through, right? They are not suppressed. Only the tails of the sound are pushed down now. Maybe go back to one here. And you can use this now as an EQ, as a match EQ because we just pull down all these frequencies, but you can also use this just as an analyzer. So you can compare it basically to your own track and you can see here where it tries to remove certain frequencies and you can go down to your tracks and maybe remove some of the overtones from the bass or maybe from the kick or whatever. Um, so you can also use this as an analyzer and compare your own mix down to other mix downs and you can perfectly see what's going on. So if you are interested in this uh, plugin, there's a link in the description below to this website here. Um, there's also a lot of stuff in this plugin I haven't talked about in this video and also some stuff I talked about in different videos on my channel. Maybe you want to look them up. There's also smart AI in there if you like this buzzword. Um, so um, click the link. It's only 79 bucks. There's no iLock. Um, most of the updates are free and uh, it's a German company. What else do you want, right? So link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.